Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, today we're going to work, start working on the English Accessory Kit by Rio Rondo. Part number for this is KAC2T. This was, kit was donated by Rio Rondo and uh, so I just want to tell you what a fantastic place it is to get all of your um, hardware and even uh, little bits of project leather that you may have trouble finding elsewhere. Um, today we'll go ahead and start with the boots. Um, we're finishing up our English saddle. Um, I already finished the Western. I don't have anything more to do with the Western one I was doing, but we've got our English saddle with tree. And um, this is this is that. And um, so now what we're going to do is move on to the, the rest. We're going to make the whole entire setup. So I'll have to make the bridle, the martingale, the boots, all of that. And this is a working, all-purpose uh, English saddle working saddle, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and... Um, put aside this but we'll do the boots boots are um and, and people ask me all the time about boots um you have different types i'm not sure how much you weren't going to do the bell boots we, they've got bell boots you got your um rundown boots is what these are called and then your tendon boots which is the, the front ones so we'll go ahead and we're going to work on um these this set here um because we don't yeah, I don't necessarily do bell boots for, for jumping. Um, now, also included in this kit is you have your martingale. Um, you have a breast plate, and that would be for competition, um, kind of like your uh, um, when you're doing, uh, well, eventing, right? Um, you'd, you'd want that for your cross-country part of eventing. Um, and then, of course, uh, you're running martingale for jumping. Um, but they've got all of these pieces. We're inside the middle of the pattern, and the instructions are written inside. In the middle of the instruction book is your pattern, okay? And um, this is what it looks like, okay? Now you can, you know, uh, if you want to be, if you have the, the stuff to make more than one, you could like scan it so that you don't use your original, um, or just plan on buying a, a new kit every time so that you get, you know, all the parts that you need. But this is what your pattern looks like. Um, also, you get um, leather, you get buckles and rings, so you get your hardware, um, and enough to complete the entire pattern, or all the pieces there, and you also get leather. Um, so this is some black leather um, and some skyver. Okay, so you get all these pieces in the kit. You don't have to go running and finding them, and, and the kit's like $8. So it's actually a really good deal to get everything that you need rather than running around trying to find it in bulk, especially if you only need a couple of pair. You just buy a couple kits, you'll get what you need. Okay, now the caveat here is that I have a brown, I have a brown saddle, so I really want mine to be in brown. I don't want it to be in the black that was provided. So I'm going to use different leather. Uh, I'm not going to use um, the black leather that was provided. I'm going to go ahead and use some brown. I will use um, I will use the Skyver because that's hard enough to find. Um, but what I'm going to do is I like um, tooling leather. So I'm going to go ahead and use my tooling leather. It's not going to be a very big, you know, it's just going to be a small square of it. Um, but I'll go ahead and use that <clears throat> in tooling leather. <clears throat> and then um, for my regular lit with my leather lace, I dye my own. So um, I've got uh, I've got three different uh, widths of leather lace already dyed, and, and then I respooled it. So it would, you know this is badly respooled, but I respooled it so um, I can um, pull that off and use it as I need it. So first thing that I always do, um, I use the glue stick method, so I want to go ahead and cut out all of my little squares here, um, and um, and I'll be right back, okay? Okay, so I have everything cut out, including the ruler, which I find very handy. Um, and um, we're not going to do the breastplate today, and we're not going to do the bell boots today, so I'm going to put those aside for later. A uh, different video. Um, we do have then these. Um, now, in the instructions, it says um, that this should be from the Skyver. This is a natural um, Skyver. It's a very thin, I've seen thinner, but this is, um, this is a nice thin Skyver. Um, and so that's what, what this piece here is going to be on. You put it on the wrong side. Some people trace. Um, if you know me, I'm into the glue stick method, so I would flip it over, put my glue stick on it, and then go ahead and stick it to my 
uh, leather like that, okay? And it should hold it just long enough for you to cut out the pattern. Um, and then we have this. Now we really don't need the ABs. Those are for the bell boots. Um, but, um, but they're all part of this, so we're just gonna go ahead and do those. Um, I'm just gonna pick, obviously, we know we have, um, um, we have to look for flaws. This is a nice clean corner, so I'm gonna do that corner right there. I know if you've seen my videos before, it's like, okay, I've seen those before, but um, we'll go ahead and show it for the people who probably haven't seen me do this before. So there we go. All right, and next step is I'm gonna go ahead and just cut out the pieces. Okay, so one of the things is that um, curves can be a little hard to get to. Um, so it, it sometimes helps if you try to cut away um, some of the piece or some of the leather. So I'm gonna go around to this and I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. And that way I'm not pulling the paper up because if I if the paper comes up, then um, it's not gonna be as clean a, um, a clean an edge. And uh, we want to be as close to that line as we can. Um, inside the line, outside the line, on the line, doesn't matter as long as you're as consistent as possible. Um, line is pretty small, so there's not going to be a huge deviation, but um, yeah, that's what I would recommend is if you can cut away some of the, um, cut uh, cut it away from, it's easier if you do like pre-cut. And now I'll work on this because now I'm not fighting that huge piece of leather I'm going to. Okay, so after it's cut out, then we have to deal with the, um, the, the lines um, that are here. Um, some are pretty easy. This is obviously... Just make sure it's cut to the center like that. And um, cut to the center. And then um, this is a little bit thicker, so I think I'll use my blade. So I'll just, um, just put it there. Bring the blade down. Put it right there. Bring the blade down. So the tip goes in and then I slice backwards. Okay. Tip goes in, slice backwards. Tip goes in, slice backwards. All right. And then we have um, we have these lines. This is where the, the leather lace will go in. Um, now this is, um, I mean, it's not incredibly thick, but it's thick enough that if you notice my blade is not, if I had something that would punch straight down, it, it would be better. But uh, because of the, the angle on the blade, um, it, it's gonna go through, more through the back than the front. All right, so I start it and then I pull it and then just to make sure that it's going to even on both sides, I will lift up and try and complete it straight up, okay? And I might even run it both directions. So that's what I was going to do. That. So bring it and then up at the very end to try and get that. So it's the cut itself is the same on both sides. Um, these are a little bit smaller. Now it's always better to have a smaller hole than a big one because if it's too small you can make it a little bigger. If it's um, if it's too big you can't really do any much to make it smaller. So this blade is actually a little bit too big for that hole so I'm going to switch to that was a uh, 25 blade. This here is, a, is an 11 blade. I don't know if you can see that but it does say 11. Um, so with the 11 blade, it's going to be, again, there's the angle, right? But it's a smaller blade. It's not as wide. So if you look, not as wide. So I can actually make a smaller hole, um, not make it too big. So pretty much it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to start it and then I get to that line and we're just going to bring the blade up. I don't even know if I can turn this. See at an angle. Mm. I don't think so. Let's see. All right. So in, pull it, and then lift the blade. 
up. Okay, and then and then we should get like a straight. It should be straight on the other side. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm trying. So this one here, if you can see, is not as um, as defined. See how that line there is not as defined. So I need to go through it again um, because I didn't do it right. So we're going to go in at the at the angle, and then up and straight. And at the angle, up and straight. And then that should make it, now it's more, um, it's more defined. If you can see, it's opened up. Um, so watch for that because it, it's the thickness of the leather that does it. If I just go across like that, um, and then you'll see that there's almost no, look there, no, see, there's almost no, hole whatsoever because of the way that I did it. So if I do it again, oh wait, it should be an up. Was that the one? I don't remember now. Let's see. Okay, so now if you look, I have a better defined um, uh, slit here because of that. So that's what I'm trying to avoid is where I have it nice and open on one side, but on the other side, it's almost not even there. So, and pull, and up, uh, down, and then up. And then on the other side, I should have four nicely defined slits that I'll be able to see. Okay, the pattern calls for 332nd inch lace, leather lace, and um, this is leather lace that was natural and I dyed it. And, um, and now I'm going to skive because you have to know how to skive. Um, I should probably just do a video on how to skive. But anyways, I'm going to skive it. Now you can pre-cut um, your pieces. So um, I need four 3 inch uh, for my um, tendon boots and we need... Um, same thing for the um, the rundown or galloping boots. So, I mean, I could just go ahead and pre-cut the lengths that I need and then skive. Um, but anyways, that would be your next step, is to go ahead and skive either the, the, the leather lace that was provided. Now, I do the whole thing um, just because I like the, the I just like it, I think it's more realistic. Um, but um, I don't know if you guys, I always show this because I'm a believer in skiving. But anyways, it's just taking off a little bit of that thickness. And this is actually pretty thin already, but oh, that's a nasty blade. I don't like it. Okay, we'll try this one. This blade's a little better. All right. Um, make sure you have a sharp blade if it's not sharp and it doesn't cut smoothly. Anyways, that's all we're really going to do is just take off some of that thickness. And I'm going to go ahead and do enough to, to do both sets of boots, okay? Okay, so the next thing you're going to need to do is clean your buckles. Um, buckles get lost pretty easily, so I have like a plastic lid. I just hold them in, and that way I can pick this up and move it around rather than trying to round up all the buckles. Now, there's different size buckles in here. We're using the 332nd, which in here happens to be the smaller of the buckles. Um, in case you're wondering. So what you need to do to clean these, um, and you can kind of see they've got these little sharp tips here. Those need to be cut and filed. So um, I find um, using my side cutters, these um, these are my favorite, and I've got to find another pair because they're getting dull, but um, you kind of want to just nip that off and then to make sure there's no sharp edges that can actually scratch you or your model um, use a, a file um, now this is a diamond file which is um, sometimes has no ridges on it and I just find it more effective uh, than there's some files that actually have ridges and I find that they just get caught um, if the nib is a little too small to cut then you can just file and if you see there you go I've removed um, that excess it should be clean I'm going to go ahead and do that to all eight of the buckles because uh, we need eight of them, and then I'll be back. Okay, so now I can um, remove the paper um, from all of this. Um, and when I was looking at it, um, 
realized that um, the um, tooling leather that I'm using um, is going to need an edge coat. Now this natural that I'm pulling this off of, and you pull the paper as close to where it attaches. I don't know if you saw how that works, so that you don't actually rip it. <coughs> but anyways, let's try that again. Um, so, let's see. But anyways, um, so see, yeah, I'm putting my thumbnail as close to where that paper is, so when I pull, um, it's less likely for the paper to rip. All right, don't don't try and do it this way because then it might rip. You want to get as close to where it's being pulled as possible, and that'll also help you not to accidentally um, stretch the leather because you can accidentally stretch the leather. I did a little bit right there, but it's so tiny nobody will notice, and I can deal with it. Okay, so as I'm pulling the paper off here, if you notice um, this, um, well, of course, because that's where the holes were. All right. Um, it, I, I need edge coat because that's the color of the leather. That's the color of the edge, which is the same color as the back, and I, that's unacceptable. So I'm going to go ahead and edge coat that. Um, I will use actual edge coat. Just, I sometimes use a Sharpie. As people have seen that, but I'll just go ahead and use um, regular edge coat. And I'm going to do that before I um, start my assembly because it'll be a lot easier. I know when I was doing the Western boots, I didn't notice until much later. And yeah, if paper sticks a little bit, then I just I just use my blade and I kind of shave it off. It usually doesn't. It's usually pretty good about just coming right off. But if you notice, it's not. Is it everybody? Two, three, four. Okay, good. So I'll be back with edge coat. Isn't that a pretty board? Looks like some really great finger painting. But this is the board that I, I use uh, in my workstation to try and keep this stuff off of my desk. Um, so it's kind of dirty. I suppose I could go wash it. Now, technically, you don't have to use edge coat or a Sharpie. You can just use dye on a, a Q-tip is another way to do this. So if you dye your own and you don't have edge coat, then you can just get, you know, a, um, a Q-tip into your regular dye and use that. This is uh, Phoebe's Edge Coat in Brown. And um, I just, I have it, so I might as well use it, right? I've had it for a long time, and I... Um, I still haven't used it up. So dedicated brushes, this brush, the only thing it does is edge coat and it just kind of wipe it off and I put it back on. Uh, the bottle, I use uh, that rubber band to keep my brush attached to it. So I always have it available um, when I go to use it. Now I do also, um, when I do edge coat, I do uh, right side that way, uh, away from my brush and then um, less likely to accidentally, um, it's not a big deal if this gets on the right side because it'll come right off. Um, but, um, you know, I just I just don't like to have to deal with those little blobs. But anyways, now if you can see, my edge is now the same color. Here's the other piece. So now my edge is now the same color as the front side. And um, it's just a little detail that helps with realism. Um, I think that's about it. Um, I will be back. All right, next step is to go ahead and put a buckle on the end of all eight of your um, straps that you've clipped and um, skived. Um, so if you don't know how to make a buckle, you're going over the center bar. So through, and then we're gonna go through the other side so that we're wrapped around the center bar. All right, that's your buckle. Um, your fold over, and it's how, whatever you're comfortable with, usually we say about a quarter inch um, is a good hold because it does have to have some strength to it when you go to pull it tight. So we'll do about a quarter inch like that. Now as far as glue, however you handle glue, uh, some people like to squeeze it out on like a paper plate or something and then use an adapter to um, like a tooth toothpick or a piece of, um, wire to um, control the, the glue and apply it, a glue applicator, I guess you could call it. Um, you can do it that way with me. I just have a really teeny tiny hole in the tip of my glue, um, a nice sticky glue, in the tip of the adapter. It's a small hole. And it's just, just enough to kind of come out a little bit, if you see that. Um, so it's a small hole, and that gives me a lot of control. Um, 
need to do this eight times, um, and I'm not going to make you watch me, but we need to make eight buckle straps. And uh, after I finished, I will be back. Okay, so we're going to work on the tendon boots first. These are the ones for the front legs. Um, and uh, what we need to do first is we're going to uh, need to, uh, let's see if I can illustrate this. Um, you're going to take where that slit is. You can see. Yeah, it's a little brighter. Okay. So we're going to take where that slit is. And, and I didn't edge coat that. Um, probably should have. We'll probably go back and do that afterwards. What we want to do is we want to push that behind and push this one forward so that it creates a cup. And really want if possible for this line here to be straight down. Oh, I did my nail. I'm gonna fix that later. So that means putting glue. Um, I'm gonna put glue here and I'm gonna try and just bend and warp until I can force that. And um, a little bit harder on um, the stiff leather that's, that is tooling leather. A little bit easier on your vegetable tanned, which is what this comes from, comes with. Um, so I could have used a, a vegetable, I'm sorry, a um, chrome tanned, chrome tanned. So a chrome tanned um, would probably be easier, a little bit stretchier. This is a lot stiffer. Um, so I'm going to see if I can illustrate that. Now I always prefit before I glue. And then um, that way I, I've got it already basically rehearsed. And it's being a pain, so I'll try again. 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. See if that holds. That's pretty good. And I could even probably skive part of that if I wanted to. It's not holding, I'm going to do it again. I didn't hold it long enough the first time. So let's do this again. I want to try and get that to go straight down. There we go. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one, nine, one thousand, ten, one thousand. There's no rush on this. So this is where you can have like a TV show other than me keeping you entertained. Or you can just, you know, fast forward or whatever if you already have it down. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. So I'll put the glue either on the back side or the front side, either way, it doesn't matter. Just it's kinda like Down. Let's just do one more time. Pre-fitting. I'm not happy with that. We'll just keep working it. And like I said, the um, your chrome tan will be a lot easier. Um, this is not cooperating. So you get to see the real fun we tag makers go through in order to make those wonderful kits. I think you appreciate the price tag that we put on our hard work because I think we got a good cup on both sides. I think I'll go ahead and hold those until I know that they're as set up as they can be. Yeah, I'll probably just grab a Sharpie and get those. All right, and then the same thing to the other side. I still want to work it a little better beforehand. I think I'll do both sides too. So since I dyed my own, 
and it's also because it's tooling leather, it's a little bit stiffer. Um, and you can just working it a little, put get some um, some of the what is it called supple suppleness back into it. I don't want to say subtle, but it's supple. So go ahead and. In fact, just because it's bugging me, but I think that'll help you guys see the lines. I'm not going to go ahead and do that till afterwards because it's kind of hard with all these shadows to see what's up. So I'll go ahead and do exactly the same thing again to the other boot. As I've talked about in my other videos, I always have little pieces of t-shirt. So old t-shirts got all stained and everything. I cut them up into little squares and I use those for my um, for my fingers just to kind of keep the glue off of them. And just little squares because nobody wants to have a great big t-shirt around. But um, I find they don't have the um, uh, lint that paper towels get and they also don't stick to my hands like paper towels and napkins. So the paper tends to stick to the glue where where the cloth doesn't, so I just, I'll use it until it's all used up, and then I'll get a new one, and um, if you wear t-shirts a lot, which I do, I used to wear white t-shirts all the time, I get them for like five for ten dollars, and I'd wear them while I was making all my tack and stuff, because I could bleach them, and once they were so badly stained they couldn't be bleached anymore, I could just cut them up and use them as scrap, recycle, recycle, right? And now I have to go to work, so I can't wear white t-shirts all the time. All right, so now we've made these little cups. You'll see that's it's like, put that down. See, we have like a third dimension. And usually when you do little things like that, that's what you're working for is a third dimension. Um, that gives it some contour. So the um, ankles of your animal, I'm sure they're called the hawks, right? Um, I like to relate it to body parts that I'm more familiar with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, but anyways, there you go, those are your cups. And now um, now we need to put the straps through. And you're gonna create a mirror image. So I'm gonna start this one on this side. And um, what, however, whatever works for you, I'm gonna use an awl to try and open up the hole a little bit. Um, I'm gonna put just a little tip on my leather so that it's more like a needle and then I'll go ahead and feed it I'm gonna feed it through both if I can unless it's going to be cranky now feed it through on the other side and then I'll pull it through it's harder to do this with um, the vegetable tanned if you saw how I put together the western boots um yeah i had to go one at a time but this here because this is tooling leather and stiffer and it'll hold when i do this it'll hold it longer for me which means um i've got more working time to push it through the hole and um the chrome tan tends to go back to its original shape faster i don't know if that's a benefit or not but I find when feeding this lace through that um, the um, tooling leather, because of its stiffness, is a little bit easier. And um, let's see, I hope you guys can see that. I've done everything I can to reduce the shadows, but there we go. I won't set the buckles yet. We'll do that afterwards. And we can do it so that they're a mirror image of each other. So I'll go ahead and show again. This is going to go a lot faster than the Western boots did because it'd be a little easier to feed this through. Hopefully, right? But you want to be careful not to make the hole so wide that you actually bust the, we're just stretching it a little bit, opening it up just a little bit. So you 
I like using an awl for this. Um, you can use a needle on a stick. You could use a pair of pliers to open it up, whatever you got. But um, this is my preferred method is to use the awl. Okay, now we're going to be feeding. We want to make a mirror image, so I'll be feeding the buckles to the other side this time. Um, but we're going to do basically the same thing. We're going to open up the hole. We're going to make our tips. I'm just going to do both of those now. Need a new pair of side cutters. <sighs> I weep. Oh. I weep for the death of my side cutters. <sighs> Probably get out of file and see if I can't do something to. Oh, they went straight through. That's awesome. And then you can always use. I would use toothless pliers or round pliers for pulling so that you don't transfer the tooth marks onto your lace. Sometimes you have to push it in through the other side. Yeah, come on. So, almost. Almost. Hmm. Push a little bit more through. Push a little bit more through. And then we're going to hold up a little bit. Last time, this is probably the hardest part of these boots, is this threading right here. Because once you do this, you set where you want your buckles and then you're done. So you can use the sharp tip to kind of grab it and pull it in. And I think we're gonna have to do this one at a time. I don't wanna pull it through too much. And then we'll feed it back through. There's always one, by the way. There's always one that misbehaves, so it's not you, it's the leather. Had it. Then I ruined it. Let's see if that's enough. Ooh. In this case, I need some teeth to grab that tip. So that's better. Although I don't recommend that because then you get tooth marks. But okay, so. There are your finished running boots. And the other thing, oh, right. Now these are gallop or rundown boots. 
And these are our pieces. And uh, we're pretty much going to do what we did uh, before, and that's to um, make that little cup or bowl or whatever you want to call it by pulling um, this so that it's straight down. Okay, so it's going to be the shorter one. The longer one goes under, the shorter one goes over. Um, so we'll go ahead and go straight down. And this, um, this natural colored leather is going to be real easy to work with. It's lovely stuff. And we'll do the same to this one. So you're not you're trying to match the edges as it goes around too. I don't know if that's apparent. So I'm not just bringing that straight down. I am also um, matching the edges here too to make sure that that tucks in where it's supposed to so it's not sticking out funny right and that is what creates your little cup or bowl and you can see that that third dimension all right so we're going to do the same thing here only this is tooling leather so i'm going to have to work it a little bit get it to get some of that suppleness into it so it's not as stiff um so let's see that we want this straight down. So there's your top and you want to go straight down from that top. So I have to hold a little bit longer around the glue here. A lot of it has to do with the dye that I use. It also has a little bit of a sealer in it, which means it's more resistant to um, chemicals. It's not completely sealed, but um, there is a sealer in it. All right, so I just hold that at least 10 seconds. Um, five is usually normal <clears throat> for my white glue, but in this case, because of the extra stress and the fact that it's a right side to a wrong side, I'm just going to give it a good 10 seconds, and that should hold it. And um, if I don't actually want to hold it myself for 10 seconds, I could, you know, take a clip and just put that on there. That'll hold it, All right? Now we'll do this other, other one. And sometimes too much glue can also be part of the reason why it takes longer to set up. Um, you really don't need uh, nothing but just a little bit of a smearing of glue. And um, even, you know, I don't even put on that much, but even it, but I put on excess. You can see I'm constantly wiping away excess. That's why we love fingernails. Fingernails do a really good job of that. All right, so we want to make sure it's held. So we'll go ahead and clip that. Um, our next step is going to be the um, same thing as before. We're going to feed these through the slits that we made. And while that glue is drying, I'll go ahead and make my points so it should be easier to feed it. Now these, um, <clears throat> these slits are smaller than on the other boots, so it's going to be a little bit more challenging Gosh. because... Um, just smaller holes so we'll see how it goes um, and see it creating basically I just a needle point is what I'm trying to do because it's easier to feed through if it's a point okay so now we're gonna take the all again we went through all of the other ones this is gonna basically be the same and again you want um, wait, I gotta find out where my buckles which side do my buckles go on so that's one of the reasons why you keep your kit hand, your instructions handy is to answer that question. So, I'm going to go on the small side, and they should actually lay flat on it, and that's good to know, right? So, we're going to, that's what they're going to look like. So, I'm going for that right now. Yeah. That means we're going to feed it in this direction. Let's just see how. I think because these are so small, I'm going to have to feed them backwards and forwards. So we'll see. It's very tiny, tiny slits. I have to be really careful when we 
open up the hole that we don't accidentally bust the leather. So I'm going to do these one at a time. direction. I'm trying so hard not to. I just want to kind of stretch it open temporarily. I don't want it to be permanent. And um, tip kind of got wimpy on me, so I'm going to put a little bit of the excess which made the tip just a little bit more like a needle and we'll feed that in there push it through a little bit Exactly where the buckles need to be on this, so we're gonna pull it just a little bit more. So we're gonna get that buckle placed, and it's not gonna get any closer, so that's about it. Now we come around here, it's gonna be the same thing. We have to do these one at a time just because those slits are so small. See how my tip gets wrecked? It's all right. And I'm just slightly stretching it open. I don't want to tear it. I don't want to. I just want it so that I can get the hole open enough <clears throat> to feed this through. Probably need more of a tip on it. Just So three more times. I need one more here and then I need to do the other one on both sides and I'll be back. All right, so the last piece is going to be to um, glue this over centered in here. All right, right like that. Um, now, it should be pretty simple or straightforward, but we have to kind of talk about buckle keepers. When we pull this around and we pull it tight, I like to keep this long so that I have more, um, just more leverage when I put these on a model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, underneath here be my buckle keeper. So I'm really just gluing here, in here, and down here. Um, and if, and you'll see that, um, you know, we've got this, it's wrapped around the model. And then there's your buckles and you pull it tight and you've got all this extra lace hanging over the edge and it's not realistic to have it actually hanging over this you want to kind of hide it so that's why I'm gonna I'm gonna make this quote-unquote buckle keeper it's gonna keep my buckles so um, different ways to do this sometimes I'll glue it and then I'll just stick a that's what I did on the uh, Western ones um, just glued it and then I um, busted the um, the glue bond where I wanted it uh, open for my lace so let's see how that works again. Maybe we'll do it. Maybe we'll be successful here too. So we're going to center this. Usually start at the bottom and then 
push it up and then make sure that it sticks in the places you absolutely want it to stick and that's going to be right in here and then right down here and right up here and then um, I'm going to run my needle on a stick through and see what I can do to kind of break that bond but I want to see yeah just so I'll come back later when it dries and and then it'll work better for me so do that and I guess I could just kind of um, put the glue in here, in there, and right around here. I think the other way will work better, but that's another way to do it. So I can try and keep the area where the lace is open. So now I can kind of push it. And then see if we can keep hands are shaking. I think I need to go eat breakfast. Alright. I love my needle on a stick. It's a great tool. So, let's see how I'm supposed to do that. So, let's just try and keep it open. And this is going to be, I mean, you don't have to do this, but for me, I, I like the leverage of having longer laces. And the only other option would be to cut them really short, and I'm not really fond of that idea. So, now I'm the, yeah, I think we're good. Let's see how this works. glue on my little needle on a stick. So, let's see how that works in a little bit. When we tack up a horse, we also have an um, interesting issue of what I'm going to do for leather keepers here. And, um, and this is not part of the pattern. The pattern doesn't speak of um, what you do for keepers. So I'm going to put it on a horse and see how it wraps because I'm not sure I've got my buckles set where I want them set. They may be too far over. I may need to pull them. Depends upon, you know, the bone of the animal that you're doing, but I'm pretty sure those are a little long. So, so they are adjustable in, in a lot of ways when it comes to how, how, how big boned is your animal. So I'm going to go pick somebody to be the um, model for this set and uh, be right back and we'll see if we can do a tack up. Okay, I picked a model. Um, this is Gem Twist. Uh, this is the snowman uh, model. Um, I bought him because he's white and white shows off my tack better than, than um, any other color. So I have shown him. He's got some ribbons. He's got some nan ribbons for jumping and something else. I don't know. I had him on a couple of things. All right. So let's do the back ones first. Um, let's see if I can show you how it's done. So that's going to go on the inside. That's got to be the wrong one. Okay. All right. That's better. So we need to, and you can see how boned, he's a big boned model, okay? So we're just basically barely even gonna be able to touch, but I'm gonna go up a little higher here and um, using my little fingers. These are so much fun during live shows. When you only have a certain amount of time to tack up and you just want to scream because it's not enough time. But that's part of what the competition is. How quickly can you tack up your model? You always have to pre-plan. Sometimes you skip certain classes just because you know you can't tack them up fast enough. And you want to be able to tack them up. 
least one class ahead, so. I usually skip English Pleasure. English Pleasure is a beauty pageant. And, um, because it's a beauty pageant, you just, it has to, everything has to be flawless, and it's like, eh. Uh, it's just the horse and the tack. And um, I like doing dioramas where the horse is actually doing something, not just trotting a place. Or cantering or whatever gait you decide, but just make sure those are on there and slide them down into place. Let's see what our extra is. Okay, it's not too much. So let's see if I've got the awkward angle, isn't it? Let's see if I have room in here to tuck that extra. And that one's good, so let's see if we can tuck that in there. That's why most English horses are just English. <laughs> if they perform, they perform. And then you can have your beauty pleasure horse. Because you wouldn't have this on English pleasure. And that's usually the first first or second class. And then, and then you get your actual other performance, like jumping and trail and all of the others. And those, I would always have protective boots on. And um, pleasure, there's no martingale, there's no um, breast anything, no, it's just the saddle and the horse and um, the bridle. And first time tack up is usually the hardest because you're making those adjustments, but there you go. So, now I've found a place to put that extra so it's nice and clean. I didn't have to cut any of it loose just to make it, you know, fit. All right. I'm going to make it look good. I'll go ahead and do this other boot on the other leg, and then I'll be back. All right. Rear boots are in place. Now we're going to work on our front boots. to scrape up my horse too much on the in the process. Now these actually go forward like this. And um, you're gonna want your laces to be on the outside. Okay, because you don't want them to interfere with the horse's stride. So because I didn't quite know and I'm still not sure about what to do with the keepers, I'm gonna just put one on and then see if I can figure out what I'm going to do about keepers because I, I um, don't recall when I made these before what I decided. I think on these I just I just um, put them on the animal permanently and cut it but I don't want to have to do that every time because then I also don't know what you know different animals I might put this on so I want to maintain that versatility where I can use it on multiple models, and I want to want to find a way to keep my laces as long as possible on this. Come on, baby. Don't be difficult. Tiny fingers. model is a model and models my tack for me all right so that's the way the boots are supposed to fit and I could probably make them a little bit um, I should probably increase the size a little bit these seem a little small for traditional but let's see mm-hmm 
Okay. So now I've got this extra and I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do. And looking at this, I'm thinking maybe I should put a keeper right here in the back. Okay, different ways you can do that. Um, I think I'm just gonna do a strip of leather down, or I could actually make keepers right, individual keepers on the actual lace. Um, I think I'll do it on the lace. I think it'll be cleaner, ultimately. Um, so I'm pulling these off and I'm gonna go make those keepers. And um, I'll, I'll be back with that. Okay, first thing is I'm gonna make sure the buckles are basically the same distance away from the edge so that I can just mirror image these. Um, the buckle keeper is going to be right in there. So I'm going to hold down that side where the buckle is. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. Same with this one. And just so I can get underneath. Um, now I pre skived some of my um, 332nd lace here. Um, and um, basically, let's see how we'll do this. <clears throat> and I'm going to clip, I normally wouldn't even remove it from this spool, but I'm going to go ahead and clip some of this off because I need to be able to maneuver it. I hate having any extra little pieces lying around. So once I got that done, now I need to bring it around this way. This is kind of the hard way to do it, but I don't want to have to re-thread that through the, the leather. I was afraid I'm going to bust it when I'm trying to... make the hole bigger. All right, so I'm going to very carefully, and this is where you might want to use a glue spreader. Sometimes it's just easier for glue control, but now I'm going to smash that down. And that's about where I want it, right there. So I see that I got a keeper there. And that should, so when I roll this around and I, the extra will be held right in there. Okay. And um, we're going to go ahead and do basically the same thing. Have to be careful not to accidentally clip the wrong thing there. That's good. All right. So we're going to do the same thing here. A little bit there. And tuck it in right where I think I want it. Should be as close to a mirror image of that as possible. Then I'm going to bring this around and um, not sure. Oh, hang on. So I'm going to use my needle and a stick my glue spreader and um, put that right under where the other one was attached and then pull this don't want it too tight because I'm trying to create a loop Big. That's a better. There we go. Okay. And I'll go ahead and do that to this one as well. Okay. There you go. All tacked up. The um, keepers are holding down my extra lace. Um, a couple of these I trimmed a little bit because the tip was worn. 
uh, from being pushed through the leather so many times. So you can trim it up a little bit, but for the most part, you can see that it's a lot neater. Um, the um, you know, they're being held down. You could sticky wax them, but um, I mean, really, what's the point? We might as well just have permanent keepers. Um, but I'll let you see from both sides. There's your front tendon. Again, these just feel like a little bit small for this guy. I would actually, um, um, having done this now, I would increase this pattern maybe by 5% and then remake them for this guy because he's really big bone and these are just a little bit small in him. Um, and then you have your rear ones, and these fit pretty good, so I don't think I would, would change those. Um, but there are your boots. Have a good day.